365 data is automatically backed up can feel a lot like this. Backing up Office 365 data with Veeam feels like this. So back it up with Veeam. All right, I'd like to introduce uh, Curdy, who can introduce himself and uh, kick off the session. Thank you, Curdy. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Let me share my screen and see if you can see the screen. Good to go. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Hello, good morning, everyone, and maybe good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Thanks for joining the session Deep Dive uh, on in Power Apps Portal. So today I'm going to talk about uh, how to create the environment, how to use the Power Apps portals and why we need to use this and how uh, the architecture is designed for Power Apps portal. So I'll be talking about those topics. And uh, uh, this event has been uh, helping this uh, Chicago uh, public school through the Children First Fund. So if you are uh, looking out for any contribution, then you can use this link and uh, uh, do the contributions. So this is a great cause uh, this community is doing. And again, uh, this could not be happen uh, without the support for, from the sponsors. So thanks to all the sponsors who are helping us to execute this event. And if you feel uh, we need to improve something, then uh, you can use this link just to uh, give your feedback. So that will help us to improve uh, in the upcoming events. So yeah, before I jump into the uh, today's session that is uh, Power Apps Portals, I just want to briefly give you, give you information on uh, who I am. So my name is Kirti Prajapati and I'm Microsoft MVP, Microsoft Certified Trainer and working as an independent consultant. And I have been doing SharePoint since 2007. So it's more than a kind of uh, 13, 14 years now working with SharePoint. And uh, by trade, uh, I would call myself a SharePoint consultant as well as developer and <clears throat> because I want to uh, learn new things and implement in day-to-day -day project work and uh, provide a, providing the other information like what has been launched by Microsoft to the customers and based on that uh, implement something which can help the organization in terms of increase the productivity. So uh, I'm also calling myself an evangelist because uh, I like to talk about and encourage the use of Microsoft 365 and SharePoint uh, uh, with the corporate people. And I have been speaking uh, in local and international community events and conferences. And I'm very passionate to share my knowledge in all possible ways. So either it could be a kind of speaking event, writing blog or providing training. So yeah, that's it. And uh, Along with this, uh, I am also an organizer of uh, Microsoft 365 Ahmedabad user group in India and organizing uh, events like Microsoft 365 Global Development Bootcamp, then Global Power Platform Bootcamp, SharePoint Saturdays, and of course, uh, also uh, uh, conducting some kind of uh, workshops which can help the developer community to learn what has been uh, uh, released and launched by Microsoft as a cutting edge technology. Yeah, so that's it about uh, me and uh, this is the agenda for today. So I will talk about uh, a bit about introduction of Power Apps uh, portals, then uh, how the architecture is uh, designed, then what are the components we can consider when we are talking about Power Apps portals. So we'll explore that and how you can create this uh, Power Apps Portal website. So I'll talk about few things on how to use the Power Apps Portal Studio and I will create. I have already created one demo, but I'll walk you through how to create it and how to execute it. So uh, before I jump into that, so uh, I want to introduce a few things about the uh, Power Apps uh, platform. So what is Power uh, uh, Power Platform? So Power Platform is a platform that's targeted to mostly like uh, if you are citizen developers, people who have understanding of the business, but may not be heavily skilled or heavily trained into 
uh, any kind of programming or co- IT programming or computing computer programming. So the idea is to uh, idea is that uh, Microsoft provides such kind of features and tools for developers or you can say citizen developers to create applications without having a vast knowledge of computer programming. So you have different technologies with that stack. You have like uh, Power Apps, uh, uh, then Canvas Apps, uh, which allows us to create applications for mobile devices and uh, tablets. Uh, so you can use for the different devices. And then it comes with the Power Automate. So Power Automate is a technology that allows for a citizen developer again uh, <clears throat> Uh, again, somebody uh, who does not have very deep knowledge into programming languages or skills to integrate systems uh, using point and click or drag and drop the capabilities for the business process flow you are looking out for. And the third one is the Power BI, so which is again a, a citizen developer tool which comes under this uh, Power Platform stack uh, that allows uh, folks to create dashboards technology to expose information in a way that is uh, easy for other users to consume and understand and based on that they can have some uh, some forecasting or some decision making uh, process based on the data and the fourth one is uh, uh, the power apps portal so uh, it's the ability to build low code responsive websites which allow external users to interact with the data stored in the common data uh, service or data verse so uh, it will allow the external users to access your website and they can uh, consume the data or get the information of the real data which is available for specific uh, the, the uh, what uh, for example product or some customer information so there is no need to log in into the website and no uh, credentials required to access the data so and anonymously they can access all the information so uh the question should come in mind like why we need power apps portals though we have the uh, canvas apps capability then uh, the model driven apps capability so why we need this uh, power apps portal so the power apps portals most common scenarios uh, uh, is for application or web application that is used by clients of your company so your mobile device app could potentially be used by clients but the way that Microsoft designed the Canvas apps, it requires your users to log, log in using a paid license of uh, Power Platform, whereas in the portal, you can expose all the information to your clientele, to your end users, clients, using a web-based approach. So you have common scenarios here where Power Apps portals can be used. So no need to access uh, using your uh, uh, Power Apps uh, license credentials when we are talking about the Power Apps portals. So Power Apps portals allows organizations to create websites which can be shared with users external externally to uh, their organization either anonymously or through the login provider. If you want uh, like uh, your external users or the external customers needs a credentials to access the Power Apps portal, then there is an option that you can also uh, allow them uh, with login provider of their choice, like for example, LinkedIn, Microsoft account, or other commercial login providers. So you can also integrate enterprise login providers as well. It is not fixed that, that this Power Apps portal can be used for anonymous access only. But along with that, we have an option that if you want to uh, use some kind of uh, uh, login providers, then that option is there. So uh, this is why we are uh, uh, we are using this Power Apps portal to <coughs> access anonymously and get all the information of the product or the whatever the content you are trying to share with the customers. So the other question is like. Uh, when to use Power Apps portal. So there are a lot of scenarios in that case. You can consider that we should go with this uh, Power Apps portal uh, implementation. So I'm I'm just uh, sharing a couple of main uses for Power Apps portal here. So first, like uh, if you want to build a public facing website that can be accessed by anonymous and or authenticated users, that's the first scenario where uh, we can go with the Power Apps portals. In, in in this case, uh, uh, 
uh, power apps, uh, canvas apps or model driven apps will not work. So this is the option that we can consider about. And the second option is you want to create an integrated experience with other Microsoft technologies. Like if you want to integrate something uh, uh, within the Power Apps portal, uh, for example, embedding a Power BI dashboard or uh, report into your website so your customer can get access all the data along with the report uh, information and in the in the view of the dashboard from the website. So uh, they can go with this one. And if you want to triggering a workflow when a user submit a form on your website, let's say, for example, if you have created some kind of uh, ticketing information system where your customer needs to submit something and based on that, uh, uh, that trigger, you can execute the workflow and notify specific uh, users to uh, take an action on that. Uh, so that's another scenario. And it also leverage as your blob storage and uh, or you can say uh, SharePoint to store the documents. So that is also available to if you want to store something and uh, you can use application insights to track solution usage. So these are the options that we can consider uh, when we are uh, planning to use the uh, Power Apps portal. So that is all about that. And now uh, let's talk about uh, how this architecture can be designed. So this is the simple structure I have defined just to understand how it is associated with the database and how you can get the data. So uh, Power Apps portal is not completely new because uh, if some of you know that it has been around for some years, but it was previously marketed as Dynamics 365 portal. So it was there, but it was not available as uh, Power Apps portals and we can use uh, directly. So and uh, uh, it offers only as an add on to Dynamics 365 model driven application. So you have to forcefully add this if you want to use it. And this portal use the Bootstrap 3.3 version uh, uh, framework to control the appearance of the solution as well as the template language. So I'll, I'll show you that how the template has been designed. And Power Apps portal is built on top of the Dataverse or previously <coughs> we can say uh, on common data services. And the CDS or Dataverse database will host all your portals uh, data. Uh, for example, whatever the pages you have for your web application, uh, page templates, forms and forms data, etc. So everything will be available uh, in this Dataverse as in previous session use uh, he already explained that how this uh, the, the the dataverse can uh, store all the information uh, of your uh, portal. So the same way uh, everything will be there in the dataverse in terms of what we are using in the Power App, Power Apps portals. So before we use or uh, try to use it, so uh, one thing you need to keep in mind that uh, uh, you can only create one portal per Power Apps environment. Let's say, for example, if I have a uh, development environment and uh, UAT environment and production environment, so I can create one Power Apps portal for development environment, but I cannot create the other one for the same environment. So if I want to create a, other web application or uh, Power Apps portal, then I have to use other environment. So I'll, I'll show you that how to uh, create environment and uh, you can create this uh, uh, Power Apps portal. So if you want, if you need to create a second portal, then you will need to create a second environment. So that's the uh, mandatory thing. You cannot have multiple uh, portal in one environment. So you just keep in mind this thing when you are trying to uh, hands on with this. So before we can uh, uh, create a portal, we will need two prerequisites. So first you should have the uh, Power Apps environment and then uh, you should have the database available. So when you're creating the environment, it will ask you whether you want to go with the uh, CDS database or not. So you have to select that. So you should have this two as a prerequisites when you are talking about uh, implementing something for the Power Apps portals. So this is the simple architecture or uh, a high level uh, uh, images I have created. So your portal can directly communicate with uh, your uh, CDS or Dataverse uh, uh, tables and uh, 
user can consume the data or uh, uh, have a look on the <coughs> different pages of the web application which can pull the data from this uh, data verse in uh, from maybe it could be from one table or multiple tables so this is all about the uh, power apps portal architecture and uh, there are a couple of things that I want to highlight before we actually jump into the demo. So uh, if you talk about like how we can create the Power Apps portal, is there uh, any templates available out of the box or we can create from scratch? So yes, so uh, Dynamics 365 starter portals are pre-configured portal solutions that are available to help accelerate uh, deployment and typical portal projects will have unique requirements but a starter portal provides an environment that is immediately suitable for specific scenarios and audiences so uh, we have the starter portal available out of the box that can be a kind of suitable for specific scenarios and uh, can help different kind of audiences to uh, understand how uh, the application could work so when you are installing this or creating this environment uh, for the Power Apps portal, uh, it can uh, provision a, uh, or we can say when you are provisioning a Power Apps portal, the most important choice to consider are the audience. The first thing is for which type of audience you are looking out for uh, to implement this. And then second one is the workload and choosing a specific portal template that would best align with particular business requirements. So there are like six or seven uh, uh, portal templates available. So based on your uh, requirement and uh, by finding this, uh, which one would be the best aligned with your particular business requirement, you can just select it and uh, uh, create uh, your web, uh, this app portal. So a number of portal templates are available that can be provisioned. So these templates will accelerate the configuration of a portal based on the intended audience and workload. If you are building a custom business application by using uh, this Microsoft Dataverse without Dynamics 365 uh, apps enabled, your only choice is portal from blank options. So this will come when uh, we are creating the uh, environment. It will ask you whether you want to add the Dynamics 365 apps uh, 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 in your environment. If you uncheck that, then we will only have the one option to create the portal uh, that is portal from blank. So in that case, you will not be able to see all the templates available out of the box that I have mentioned here, like community portal, customer self-service and so on. So make sure that when you are creating the environment, you should check that uh, checkbox to add the Dynamics 365 apps in your uh, environment and then you will be able to utilize this uh, out of the box portal templates. So if you are using uh, uh, this uh, Dynamics 365, uh, 365 apps such as for example sales or uh, services, so you have a choice of five additional portal templates, right? Here you can say community portal, customer self-service, employee self-service, then partner portal and customer portal. So uh, these templates will be available if you are talking about this one. And each and every template have different uh, set of audiences and workloads. For example, if you are talking about community portal, then uh, your uh, target audience would be your partner or customer and which can help uh, to choose this, uh, to provision a portal that is focused on an online community and this portal will uh, contain features such as uh, if you want to share something in the forums, then ideas, blogs and case management, which can help to understand how your community uh, looking out for certain data. And the second one is customer self-service. So again, the audiences would be the same, your partners and customers. So this option provides the ability for portal users to like search the uh, knowledge articles or they want to submit some cases and if they want to participate in any discussion forums to resolve some kind of issue which can help them to increase the productivity so in that case you can think about the customer self-service in that case there is no human interview uh, required to submit something or 
uh, getting some information from the system. So it will be like automated and uh, the, your customer can submit something. It will trigger a flow and that information can be uh, navigate to or uh, share with the concerned people and they can take an action and your customer can get the response immediately. And the third one is the employee self service. Uh, so here our, our target audience will be the employee. So this portal allows employees to access a centralized knowledge articles and uh, to also submit cases. Let's say, for example, if you have uh, created one knowledge repository in your organization from where all the employees can get the information uh, what they are looking out for without asking any people in the company. So they just use this employee help service and from there they can get all the necessary documents and uh, other information as well as uh, they can uh, submit some cases like uh, leave application then uh, uh, travel expense uh, request everything so uh, this is the case we can use employee help service portal and the fourth one would be the partner so uh, uh, here uh, your target audience obviously would be the partner so if you want to go with this then uh, this option is used to build a portal where external partners can manage and collaborate on account and uh, accounts and opportunities and add-ons are available for dynamics 365 uh, field services and uh, uh, the project services so if you want to allow your uh, partners they can access from the external like anonymously or with the uh, uh, login integration or with using authentication then they can go with this template and uh, another one we have the uh, custom portal so where we can use this uh, enterprise b2b so the dynamics 365 supply chain management customer portal is a template uh, that can provide portal access to dynamics 365 supply chain management data by using dual right data verse entities so if you want to use that then you can go with that customer portal and the last one would be the portal from blank so if you if you do not want to use any of uh, uh, template from this then you can go with the portal from blank so it can be used for other or any uh, uh, target audience so the portal from blank option is meant for unique line of business scenarios which is not uh, uh, satisfied with this template and you want to use uh, or build from scratch so in that case you can use this template and uh, the other templates are not a good fit for your requirement so that's another scenario the portal can be configured uh, to address a variety of requirements if portal from blank is provisioned within a dataverse environment with dynamics 365 apps enabled then specific features from the other portals can be incorporated into the portal later so what does it mean like uh, when we are creating the environment and we have checked that uh, uh, d365 uh, apps enable in the uh, environment then later on it may possible that some of the features from other portals can be incorporated into the po your portal later on so that's the one benefit you can uh, consider uh, when we are talking about this uh, adding this microsoft 365 apps <coughs> as add-ons in your environment so this is all about the portal templates and uh, uh, before we jump into that uh, actual uh, the how to create it so there are few po uh, portal features available so you should have some knowledge on that so uh, as i mentioned that all portal templates are built on a common foundation um, that is called portal base and include the following features so it will uh, like help in different cases like ability to configure the portal by using portal studio so you can use portal studio and configure your portal web application then content management incident content publishing design theming search multilingual support and templating so all capabilities will be there then if you want to extend something that is built on web pages templates table forms table list and more so you can extend those and of course security that is based on identity management and integration with authentication providers 
web roles contain permission and table permission that is there so i'll show you in demo that how uh, the table permission and web roles can be used once you are trying to access or add the table and allow the anonymous user to access it and also the common features like ads polls ratings and comments are there the features are not standalone and can be used throughout other parts of the implementation right so uh, this is uh, a basic information on how you can uh, think about the different portal features so uh, now i'm jump into the demo and i show you how uh, you can uh, create the environment and everything so first you need to uh, log in into your uh, office 365 portal and from here you can just click on the power apps and you will be on this screen so <clears throat> first you have to find that uh, how many environments you have let's say for example in my case i have two environments this is the default one uh, that could consider as the production and that this one i have created uh, for this demo so initially i don't have any uh, other uh, environment uh, to execute this uh, or implement this power apps portal so i have created this one but how to create it so uh, let me open my another tenant which is not having uh, maybe here yeah so this is my another tenant where uh, i don't have uh, other environment i have only one environment and i want to create the new one so simply just uh, click on the left navigation environments click on new and this window will allow you to create uh, a new environment let's say for example i'm going to create development then you can use uh, sandbox or trial so i'll go with the uh, trial one so this will allow me 30 days access for uh, this one <coughs> then uh, region i'll just go with the default one in purpose uh, you can just type in anything from the next portal and here you can see the create a database for this environment so uh, we just check this and it will create the database for this environment so there are number of entities available or tables available when our environment is ready so i'm just clicking on the next and in the next screen it will ask you what would be your default language so i'll go with the language english and i do not want to use this url for now and currency uh, you can select based on the region you have selected so i'm just selecting my local currency and deploy apps and sample apps and data so this will help you to uh, load some uh, apps out of the box and with the data so that can be used as a uh, like to understand how it will work and let's click on save so it will take a couple of minutes to uh, provision this environment so this is the steps how you can create the environment so once you are done with the environment creation let me jump into that another screen Yeah, so it's uh, like uh, preparing the instance and the type is trial. So it will take few minutes and uh, it will be available for us to access. And yeah. So once it is done, like uh, then you can see uh, whatever the number of environments available from this environments option. Now go to your uh, home page of the Power App. So I'm coming to this point and just select which environment you want to use. So I'm just trying to use the development environment. So select development. And once you are there, then just, just click on the create. So you will have different options here, right? So here, uh, as I mentioned that uh, when I created this uh, environment, I have not opted for the Dynamics 365 app. So I'm not able to see any of the uh, 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 predefined or pre-configured templates here so if i want to create portal from uh, uh, power apps portal then i have only one option to create it so i need to check that or click on here to create the application from the scratch so once you click on that 
it will ask you to uh, give it a name. So oh, I'm just giving a name a star. And address will be whatever the URL you are looking out for. Just give it a name and it will check whether it's available or not. So yeah, we are good with that and you can select the language if you want to change it because I have selected default English language when we, I created this environment. So <clears throat> and you have reached the maximum limit of portals. So this is the uh, error that I was talking about because I have already created one portal in this environment. So it will not allow me to create another one. So make sure that whatever the portal you are creating, it should uh, uh, like suffice all your requirements. So you need no need to create another uh, a portal within the same environment. So in this environment, I will not be able to create another portal. So that's one thing. So let's try here. So here I'm just. Uh, it's still provisioning. Let me refresh it. And yeah, it is ready. So you can see the state is ready now. So I'm just jump jump onto the home page. And you can see I have another environment available here. So I'm just selecting the development. And. Create. Just checking how many apps available. So you can see these are the apps available. Asset checkout, innovation, change, fundraiser. So that comes when I check the apps with some sample data. So these are the apps coming out. So I'm just creating the new portal. So uh, I'm just creating from the scratch. Now give it a name, A star. Oh, good. Uh, do you, you, you want me to just stay? Sorry. Hello. So uh, it will check again uh, whether this URL is available or address is available or not. If it is available, then we are good to proceed with the name. And we have to select the language. So it might take a uh, couple of minutes. So before that, I'll just jump into here. So once you are creating this uh, portal from blank, then your website will look like this. Once you edit the website, let's say uh, I'm just closing this. Leave the page. Then. Apps. See, I have created with the K star. So I'm just selecting this and clicking on edit. So it will open in this edit uh, the, uh, the studio portal studio. This is portal studio from where you can uh, apply the changes like you can change this text. You can update the image. You can add another section. Everything you can change it from here. So. Uh, the user can access the information they are looking out for. And we have another option here, browse website. So that will help you to uh, preview the website. <clears throat> or if you do not want to use that, then you can just use this URL. So this is the URL. Just use it and you will be able to see how your home page will look like when external user accessing your portal. So for for me, my website address is kstar.powerappsportals.com and this is the these are the default uh, pages and the menu I have used for. So if I want to change up something here getting started instead of getting started, I want to change like this. <coughs> three six five and this is saved let me 
check how it will reflect immediately or taking some time. Yeah, you can see the changes are reflected immediately. So uh, from this studio, you can just uh, uh, create different pages or create the or update the out of the box content which is available on the page. And what if you want to add a new page? So in the left navigation, you can see there are different options available or on top of this, you have these options like new page. So if you want to create blank page or landing page and what type of layout you want, right? So you can select the, uh, the specific template for that. And here we have another option like pages and navigation. So it will display this menu home services about us. So and navigation. So you can see uh, the landing page is home and then we have the services and under services we have three uh, pages. So let me jump into this. <coughs> Next, <see. coughs> services, product A, product B and sign up. So this form, this page I have created uh, and this will allow uh, end user to insert the data and those data will be available in the data world. So now I'll, I'll show you that how to uh, add the form and uh, have the crude operation on that. So if you want to add anything on on this one, then you can just select. Add a new child page. Or I want to use in services. Add a child page. Then in the right side section, you will have to provide all the information. So. Here. Uh, M365 and this is the URL partial URL. So I'll change it to M365 and template links. So if you want to use any kind of template for this page, then you can just select from this one, right? So I'll just uh, page with uh, child links, the default one. And if you want to permit allow permission like page available to everyone, so that is enabled now. And if you want to restrict this, then you just uh, uh, disable it so it will not be available for everyone so you have to define like who can access this page so you have to select the different rules from here all right so but for now i'll go with the default selection that everyone can access this page and uh, you can change uh, the different component here so let's say if i want to add something here then you just click on this plus icon then select the section so it will add the section and this will be the column so if i select here we have the option like one column selection so we will have one section with one column and if you want different layout two columns section three column section so you can use that right and from here you can just add whatever you want like in this column i want to add that is called portal components like if i want to add edit text then i just need to click here if i want to add image i just need to click here let's say for example if i'm just using this form right so i want to use the form which is already created in my environment uh, in uh, uh, the uh, common data services or dataverse and i want to use the same form here so from here you have two options in the right side section you can see do you want to display some data uh, by using by creating new form or you want to use the existing one so i'll go with the use existing and from here this drop down you have to select which form you are looking out for so i have created a couple of forms so sign up form is working form for me so let me select that and from these tables you have to select the table. So this is my table, which is associated with this form. And I have selected this uh, layout sign up form. When I, I was creating this, I have given the name sign up form. So uh, select that. And from here, you can just define the more like what you want to achieve using this form. So there are three options like insert, edit and read only. So I want that user will access this page and then uh, uh, all the users will be able to uh, enter the data and they can submit the data and that will be available in my data table 
right? So uh, that's the option we have to select here. And on success message, what do you want to, uh, uh, what message you want to add? So this can be customized. So you can update whatever you want. Like there are different options here. On success message, redirect to web page, redirect to URL. So I'll go with this one default. And then hide form on success. So once your record is submitted, you will be able to see this message and your form will be hidden for user. So that's the form success settings. And then uh, permissions. So enable table permissions. So that will allow your users to access the table anonymously and uh, they can submit the data. Otherwise, it will not help or uh, allow them to insert the data in this specific table. And if you want to add some advanced settings, so uh, these are the captchas uh, if you want to uh, add for security reason uh, in your input form. So for now, I have kept it uh, enabled. So user have to enter the captcha information just to validate. But for the development environment, uh, if you want to uncheck it, you can just uncheck. And for production, it's better to have the uh, these checkboxes checked, right? So yeah, so I'm good now. When I I'm saving this, this is already saved. And let me check on this page under the services. We have created new page called M365. Yeah, so this is the form which I have created. And you can see all the input forms and this is the uh, captcha where user have to enter this information. Now, how I have created this form. So for that, I have to go into uh, let me open another instance or duplicate screen for the power apps. So now I'm talking about the data verse an actual table where I have created this. So make sure you are in the, uh, the correct environment. So yeah, we are in the development environment. Now go to the data and tables. And here I have created a gym membership table. So open it. Or if you want to create a new table, then you can just go to the tables, click on new table and give all the information here. So this will be your a table name and all the information. And after creating the table, we need to create the columns. So once you click on the table, you will be see you will be able to see all the columns. So I'm just filtering this and you can see from address to phone number. These 10 columns I have created for this form. Right and you can just uh, create like this add column column name, then what type of information you want to store. So these are the different data types available. So you can select that from here. And this is for recommended, required or optional, whatever option you are trying to use for this column. So you can select that and click on done and your column will be available in this table, right? So now here you can see the columns, then we have the forms option. So I am using the form which is available here. So click on the forms. And here you can see sign up form. I have created this one which was coming when I was just trying to insert uh, the form on the page. So you can see the name sign up form. So that is the reference of this form. It is coming from this sign up form, this one. So I'm just opening it or you if you want to create new form, just click on the add form and main form and it will allow you to create the new form with other information. So click on sign up form. And here I have added uh, all the fields which are required for uh, the user to input when they are accessing this web application. So you can see in the left navigation, left side, we have different options called components, 
then table columns so if i click here so these are the table columns which are coming from this table the uh, g membership table and i have added all required columns which needs to be uh, available on the form and user need to update the add the information for those uh, fields and then uh, yeah so make sure that if you want to change something for the header and you can change it but we are just using this form in the application so we are not doing any change in the header or the footer so make sure that uh, the, your form should have all the columns which you are looking for so i have added all the uh, columns here and uh, uh, some of the columns i have made like hidden for example owner yeah i think you can see here so membership number then owner status so these columns are uh, forcefully uh, i have uh, selected as a hidden so it will be hide for this form as well as for the users so if you want to hide any columns though it is available in the form you can just use this property to hide it or if you want to uh, use different options then we have uh, like six seven options for uh, that specific column right so uh, this is the this is the same form i'm just populating on this web application so uh, and uh, after this let me go back and i'm just selecting the data so where your data will be stored so for now i have one record here now let's say uh, user is accessing this portal and trying to insert some data so let's say for example i'm just using m365 and adding some information here mm. make sure it's correct i'm just selecting anything then your phone number so uh, phone number no need to validate anything because we have selected the phone number field and for same thing for the email address so i'm just selecting this in address and just select your captcha s y s b b g and once you click on submit you will get the message which was here uh, on submit button sign up form yeah this this will be the message you will see uh, once you submit this form so i'm just clicking on submit it will display the message and your form will be disappeared right so this is the message which we have written on on success and our form will be hidden and now we'll see uh, the data in the data verse and i'm just refreshing here so we have another record which has been added and this membership column it is kept auto generated with one number incremented and that is the reason that i have hidden on the form <coughs> somehow the gender is not reflecting here so uh, that's the issue for for this app but this is the simple way that your user can access this data verse table and uh, insert the data into this table uh, from web application now one more thing uh, you need to consider when uh, it it comes to the permission for the tables so when you are creating your app and adding this form here so you have to select the table permission otherwise your user will not be able to access this so you can see in the left navigation you have the settings option so under this security you have the table permissions so you can just select it and select your table and if you don't have that table available so uh, uh, create new permission and you can just select whatever the name you want to give it select your table and uh, assign the roles 
so that will allow the external user to access your uh, table otherwise it will give an error that uh, this is my table access type so i'm just selecting the global access and these are the privileges like what x what type of access you want uh, your external user could have right so for now i just selected everything but if you want to implement crude operation or only read then based on your requirement you can provide these privileges and add role so uh, see as i mentioned that uh, it is not necessary that anonymous user can access this but authenticated user who are using this uh, uh, login integration either linkedin microsoft account or any other uh, third party tool they can also access that so for now i am just putting for everything everyone so everyone can access this so how uh, this is the way that you can allow this uh, access with roles uh, on this table and then your user will be able to see uh, the page with table information and then you can submit the data so uh, this is the simplest way and uh, explanation that can be done for the application now uh the question could come like how, what if i want to customize or uh, update the theme for my uh, web web application right so let me open that so here we have the option called theme so if you select theme then enable basic theme so i'm just enabling it and i will have different options like if we have in the sharepoint portal so same way you can select different theme if you want like it will change immediately then you can see how it will look like and if you want to edit css then click on the edit css and you can customize based on your uh, legacy portal or some uh, system which already have the color combination and everything so from here you can just use the theme and uh, customize your application based on your requirement or in terms of the user interface changes yeah so page templates so yeah these are the page templates you can use if you want to use uh, it was coming out when we were creating the page from here if you create new page add a child page and we have the options here the default template so those are the templates which are coming there right so yeah this is all about uh, uh, the basic of uh, power apps portal how to create it how to set up your environment and uh, how you can uh, create the web application portal and then associate the forms which is coming from the data verse and user can access the portal without entering this login information so i am not signed in i am just accessing the site from outside and you can also access this from uh, from your system and it will allow you to submit the data so if you want to give it a try then you can use kstar.powerappsportals.com and uh, select the services menu and select m365 so it will allow you to submit the data and that all their data will be available in this table so i will be able to see the uh, request have been submitted in in this g membership table so yeah that's it about that's all it about uh, uh, how to work with power apps portal and uh, if you want to get in touch with me then this is the information from where we will be in touch uh, in linkedin my personal email address twitter or facebook and uh, i will be ha happy happy to uh, come i'll be in a, in a with you everyone.